everything is fine guys don't worry about anything the world is not ending as we know it the bond market is calm cool and collective and we're gonna get our 25 basis point cut from the federal reserve in the subsequent two weeks nothing to worry about we got fear and greed basically in a nice happy place not too super greedy but still in the greedy territory but if you believed any of that well I'm about to flip your whole worldview upside down. So first of all, I thought this weekend was going to be mainly focused on earnings season as we have a slew of earnings coming up. We got AMD, Alphabet, Chipotle, Visa, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Apple, Chevron, Exxon Mobil. Jeez, the list goes on and on and on. I would need a whole two weeks to cover one week of earnings. So it's going to be a fantastic time. We're going to be trying to stream Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday for all you covering the big ones. I'm going to give an option play out for each of the big ones. Meta was probably our most successful option play video of all time. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that one. We'll be coming out Wednesday around 12 p.m. So make sure you guys are subscribed for that. That was a banger option play. Meta has always profited massively. Google going to be another one that we're going to be looking at along with Microsoft. That's going to be the big ones, right? We may play Amazon and Apple depending on their earnings. And we'll be going over in this video the exact levels we need to watch out for for the market. What the market did, kind of giving you a recap, giving you guys our thoughts at the very end we're gonna be talking about the election we're gonna go through each of the big companies towards the end to basically give us your thoughts about it and subsequently we're gonna be talking about where we see everything going with the election politics or joe rogan it's, it's gonna be a fantastic time make sure you guys stay tuned to the end if you want to skip to anything it's all linked in the description below and timestamp as well so you guys can check all that out and more but more let's talk about what's going on in the economy and this week, I was not expecting to have this pop up on me, which is I ran after Israel strikes. I'm right. It's like markets closed on Friday. OK, no, no, no one can get out of their trades. Good. Let's go bomb them every single time. This is why I don't like holding things over the weekend, because just the volatility is going through the damn roof. And Iran's Supreme Leader says Israel's attack should not be exaggerated or downplayed. This is an individual basically saying that this is not the end. The escalation is going to come. Israel basically attacked Iran military targets over the weekend. And subsequently, Iran is saying, we will strike you back. That is the clear cut as we can, and if that wasn't bad enough, U.S. national debt clock about to hit 36 trillion, and you guys owe 271 thousand dollars per taxpayer. So you know you might want to get on that, paying that back. But then again, the question is, will we have an income tax in the near future, especially with Trump taking two point lead over Harris national poll? That's going to be a spicy one. And again. The bond market and everyone is basically screaming bloody murder. We went over this recently with the bonds basically hitting 7% mortgage rate again. I called it. I told you guys this was going to happen because no one wanted to take less yield for the risk. They're expecting inflation is not over. We're going to have PC. We're going to have all those expectations and more. So make sure you guys stay tuned to the end. Now, I've also talked about how Warren Buffett is saying there's no issue to drop in the banking sector. Next Saturday is Berkshire Hathaway earnings. I may be doing a live stream on Berkshire Hathaway earnings just because, again, there's going to be a Friday video that's going to be Berkshire Hathaway earnings Bank of America play. I suspect highly that Warren Buffett has sold 50 to more than 50% of Bank of America stock. So make sure you guys are staying tuned for that. So you know when that video comes out, I'll be showing you how to profit from that opportunity. And essentially it's a complete win opportunity because if there's not a lot of volatile movement in the stock, you're gonna pay basically two, three dollars and you could be making hundreds off of that play. It's gonna be a very, very lucrative. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. But if it wasn't bad enough that I think Buffett is getting out of the market, Kathy Wood sold $22.3 million of tech stocks. Now, why is this important? Well, Kathy Wood is missed by tech stocks no matter what and never sell. And now she's selling some of them, kind of reeling in some profits, not really fomenting that greed mentality, more of that fearful mentality as the, the election ramps up. With the election ramping up in the battleground states basically looking like a banger for one side only, it naturally puts into question what is gonna happen and again, Jerome Powell doesn't necessarily like the news that he's seeing as well. It's election cycle. Bond vigilant, uh, vigilantes are voting too, and they don't like what they see. 
Again, the bond market is, like I said before, when mortgage rates, they're voting that, hey, inflation is not conquered. We're gonna get a future expansion of inflation. However, the CME doesn't consider that to be the case with a 95% expectations for rate cuts in the next meeting. But the we can see by the reverse repo, everything is not well in the bond market. This thing was up to half a billion dollars, sorry, half a trillion dollars in this and now it's subsequently back at a quarter trillion so again we saw an expansion of where everything was hunky during the bond market and then we took an about face and went right back down to a new on the reverse repo so make sure you guys keep an eye on this link in the description below for that as well now just recapping before we get into the markets uh we're gonna be talking about the earnings this week we're gonna be looking at alphabet microsoft but really running quickly through them like some of the big ones google expected to be nine and three so that's gonna be a split up there microsoft 619 not so pretty meta is the banger one with sorry meta is the banger one with an expected 37 to 2 so this one's going to be a massive profit opportunity amazon's a chop fest while apple i sincerely do not believe this number considering that 18 to 9 especially with the bad news that we've been seeing from apple so make sure you guys pay attention to that we'll have videos coming out this weekend covering it on the live stream but enough talking about the stocks let's recap what happened this week with the markets and I mean, this is just horrible news. Again, the net speculative positions like we've covered previously is 23,000. There was only one team to take money from, and that is the bulls. And that's exactly what the market did this week. We actually made subsequent two lower lows on the market, did not hold them, and then closed at the low or near the low range of the week. I was expecting, hey, when this candle was here, we were pushing 1.5% on the NASDAQ, 1% on S&P. I was saying, okay, this is going to be a banger week for the bulls. Like, hey, the bears failed completely. Boy, was I wrong. Boy, was I wrong. The bears came in, slapped the bear, uh, the, uh, the bulls, and we saw that with the NASDAQ as well. The NASDAQ basically had a horrendous trading week, and the NASDAQ is even worse than the S&P for one simple reason. You can have failed weekly breakdowns, but you really can't have a failed weekly breakup because that went so far out of the range and came back. It still stayed in bullish territory. Don't get me wrong, but this is where momentum is lost, right? We fought the momentum all week long. We got a break out of the momentum and then failed to hold it completely. It completely fizzled. And how can we profit from this? Well, it's very, very simple. We look with contracted ranges in two weeks. We're going to be looking at a massive expansion this week. We got all the catalysts on deck. We're going to be discussing inflation. We're going to be discussing jobs. We're going to be discussing earnings in this video. So let's start with the market levels that we need to pay attention to this week to be the most profitable for us. And we're going to start off with the S&P. So looking at the S&P, it's a very, very simple trading strategy for the week. We see that we're at the rotationary point on the bearishness. So we basically have to be staying bearish mentality until we break a 574.42. That's going to be the low of the week. And that's where we expect to initiate most of our bearish trades. That's where we're going to be targeting this range right here, which is between the break of the week and the 50-day moving average. That's the nearest support on top of the 50-day moving average. And this area over here are sitting in coinciding support. So make sure we guys pay attention to that this week because that's where we're going to necessarily be looking for the downwards potential. Now, if we get back above the nine day moving average, which coincides with this 580, 60 points, which was our previous rotationary point, then we're going to be looking for bullish potential. So really 580, again, being that characteristic number that we've been shopping around for quite some time is I think we're going to get a unidirection week, meaning once we set a direction, we're not necessarily going to change it. So Monday is going to be extremely crucial. Are we opening higher, lower? If we're getting a gap up and go, then definitely those bullish plays that we're going to discuss in just a second are going to be the way to go. If we're down at this sub 580 level, if we're down at 578, 577, then we're subsequently going to be looking for the break of the week putting small positions bearish until we break above 580. That's going to be our stop loss area and subsequently flipping bullish if we get above 580 on a closing basis. Why I say closing basis is because we've seen time and time again where the markets can move down during the intraday and then push back up or vice versa on the bearish move, push up, then push back down. And we want to see on a closing basis where the market creates the consensus for where it's going to close during the day. So again, that 580 line in the sand is going to be very, very important. That's where it's going to determine bullish or bearish price action. If we break above 580, then I'd be looking to sell puts going on the way up, initiating bullish trades, buying calls, 
things of this nature to basically profit from that movement to the upside. And then looking for that 584 to 85 break. That would then put blue sky breakout into the territory. The Nasdaq most likely would lead this breakout. So we'd probably be initiating our, our bullish positions early on with the Nasdaq and subsequently then initiating the S&P positions. And because a lot of these stocks that are up this week, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet are big heavy weightings and Meta in the S&P, in the NASDAQ, they have a huge potential to catalyze. That's why we want to basically put a large position sizing after we get the weekly breaks, because that means that we're less likely to get movement back inwards, especially going into next week with the job numbers and everything. So make sure you guys, when we're in the chop of the week between these two levels, between 584.85 and between basically 574.42, that's where we're going to be in this area of indecisiveness where we want to keep the position size of our total position that we want to establish about 25%, right? We want to leave the 75% for those weekly breaks just because it gives us a higher degree of confidence of what is going on. So again, the S&P formula is very, very simple. Wait for the 584.85 break, wait for the 574.42 break, see how Monday shows up kind of setting the tone for bullish or bearish approach as we head into those big earnings catalysts, as we head in Wednesday to jobs and subsequently PC inflation Thursday and Friday with jobs again. So that's gonna be a banger. The NASDAQ is gonna be the key for us to know if we're gonna be bullish sentiment or bearish sentiment in the S&P. So let's jump over the NASDAQ to see what levels we have to pay attention to there. So looking at the NASDAQ here, it's similar story. 500 is gonna be the bullish approach, but really 498.83 is going to be where our previous all-time high was. And that's gonna indicate where we need to be bullish or bearish. That's gonna be the weekly break that we're gonna be looking at. So make sure you guys pay attention to that 498.84 number. Rotationary point for the NASDAQ is gonna be that where we, our bottom for the day because subsequently we got two things. We got a gap fill and the nine day moving average sitting around that 492 number. So again, that's gonna be a very, very key crucial area for us. If we start breaking below 492, then we're looking to tackle these lower price actions because if you look at where the dominant uh, price action is occurring, 490 to subsequently 485, there's not a lot. So there's not a lot of support. Everyone that bought in this previous region here is going to basically be losing money. And then maybe at this point, they're just gonna be like, hey, I'm tired of this position and close it, which subsequently could create a sell off in the market. That would also damn for sentiment, S&P be breaking down. So again, we gotta see how this all plays out on Monday. That's gonna be crucial. 494.47 again, is gonna be a crucial level for this week to determine sentiment, to protect us against downside potential. If we are breaking 494.47, again, bearish plays 25% of what your total position wants to be initiated around that point. And then subsequently, maybe we get around that 490 number add another 25% be a little more aggressive if you want to be. But the safe bet would be that 485 play or looking as we're tackling that 485 number again, tackling the 50 day moving average as our target for this because this line over here is going to be what we're going to be targeting. It's going to be sitting right around this region right here is where we basically want to be this whole time. So make sure you guys are paying attention to that level and the subsequent levels that we give out for the other indexes in this video. Again, not really complicated here. It's going to make it very, very simple. We'll give you guys updates through the week as things evolve, but I do want to jump over to the other indexes to basically give you an understanding of what's going on in the broader economy. So let's first jump over to the Chinese markets where we see we've been still stagnant. We've been below the 200 day moving average, and that is an area of resistance. Now, again, the possibility for China to break down, especially with the expectation of stimmies coming and they're not really getting it. So the, the question is how long are these investors going to be uh, bullish in China before they basically say to hell with it and then see how things play out. We also got the VIX that is looking to rip everyone's face off once again. As we head into a volatile week, obviously the VIX is going to be elevated. That's why it's an excellent opportunity to sell options just because elevated VIX, higher premium, and especially if everything comes conservatively down lower. But it's been very uncanny for the VIX to be in this elevated level as we've seen it being extremely contracted for quite some time, making higher lows and higher highs. As we see here, an uptrend forming, kind of a consolidation almost, so VIX is getting ready to basically explode as we head into the election season, which is not um, completely uncanny. Bitcoin fooled everyone again. As I said, everyone that was betting bullish on Bitcoin, I was like, I was very, very cautionary against it because 
you weren't really breaking out subsequently like you weren't really breaking out back over here. So now the question is, is Bitcoin gonna fall down back to 62,000 again? Throw it down in the comment section below what you guys think. I really wanna hear your thoughts on it. And subsequently, the, the Russell, right? The Russell's just been a crappy fest the whole way. Tom Lee, I'm still waiting for your prediction, which I have coincidentally drawn at 319, 40% rally in the in IWM or the Russell. Again, still waiting for that one, Tom. Again, I don't fault him for being wrong, but again, it's like sometimes you just gotta stop relying on your previous predictions to justify the future. Small caps haven't been very bullish at all, especially with yields crushing them as we saw in the beginning of the video. Again, if we just jump over the 10 year, look at that beautiful rally. It's huge as some would say. We basically reality set in and then we started pushing up higher. This could honestly form a cup and handle right here, which would be devastating. It would put yields higher. That means Fed rate hikes coming to you soon. I did tell you when we were down here, that most likely we're gonna get an expansion in yields. Everyone said I was crazy, and now let's see what happens further. As we see the same trend in the 30 and 20 year yields, again, one of the things I wanna point out is NYCB, the one that started it all. Keep your guys' eyes peeled on this because this one can start the carnage up again as they reported worse earnings than expected again. Another shoe to drop in the banking sector, as Warren Buffett said, so make sure you guys keep an eye on this one. I'm gonna run through the big cap stocks real quick. So let's start off with the King Apple. Okay, below the nine day moving average, not looking so hot, rejected off of it subsequently this previous week right here, but it still has a lot of room on, until earnings. So Apple's gonna be a big player, bullish or bearish, depending on how the market's going. Make sure you guys pay attention to the levels we just gave out and subsequently watch that 50 day moving average. If you're closing below 50 day moving average of 226.80 on Apple, Going into their earnings, that would be a bad, bad sign. Again, a lot of catalysts can shift it. Apple is tied heavily with the market, so make sure you guys are aware of that. The second biggest cap stock, Microsoft, again, not looking too hot just because of how long it's consolidated with this 50 and 200 day moving average, has a capability to gap down on earnings and be a very bad thing for the markets. Again, same thing like Apple, it's very influenced by the markets. Now we're getting into the ones that are less influenced by the markets. Google has been consolidating around this 200 day, 50 day moving average, similar to Microsoft, but the main difference is it has not violated the 200. You can violate the 50, but you can't violate the 200 to remain bullish. I would say I'd be playing Google to the upside just because it has a lot of catalyzed potential right here. Again, it did have a big push down. So again, the question is, Big push down is subsequently going into earnings, right? Big push down is not really forming a classical bear flag pattern here because just too much chop on the flagpole, but subsequently a nice consolidation here. I definitely be looking to play that to the upside. Make sure you guys stay tuned for that video. Meta is going to be king, going to be playing this to the upside. This is just a bull flag screaming its head off at everybody. So I may get into this earnings play on Monday just because I don't want to wait for that. So make sure you guys stick around for that. I may announce a bell earnings play. Link in the description is gonna be the Discord where I would announce that early on. So if you guys wanna know early access of that play, make sure you guys check out the Discord. And then obviously we got AMD. Again, the earnings weren't looking too hot for AMD on expectations. Again, chart doesn't look hot as all. Below the 200, barely holding on to the 50. This is just a crap hula for earnings. I basically be looking to short this thing all the way. And last but not least, good old Amazon. Again, this is one of the ones that they're saying is not gonna do too hot, but the uh, chart actually shows potential. Uh, we got a lot of 50 and 200 day moving average in this area of the 90 moving average consolidating. So Google and Amazon and Meta will probably be my top bullish plays. Microsoft, AMD would probably be my bearish plays and Apple is a throw up into the air. So make sure you guys stay tuned for those live streams and subsequent videos. We're gonna be throwing them out all to you. Now Fatal's gonna give you the biggest winners and losers and now we'll be back with him to discuss what is in store for the market. So make sure you guys tune to the very end. It's gonna be a fun one. We're gonna be talking about a lot of things, Joe Rogan, Apple earnings. We're gonna be talking about almost all the earnings, politics, housing, everything. So make sure you guys stay tuned to the very end and I'll see you guys in a little bit. So the markets actually fell this week a decent amount, 0.86%. Now, we still have the big earnings week, which we're going to see this week when it comes to AMD, Amazon, uh, Google, my, uh, McDonald's, and a bunch of other companies, which we're going to cover in just one second. But this is also in light of the fact that the election is coming up very, very soon. Nonetheless, though, the S&P 500 fell a 0.86% on Friday, and on the one day, it fell 
0.03%, so essentially flat. Now, next week's earnings, we can see that we got a whole lot. On Monday, we got waste management, we got companies like Ford, and a lot more. On Tuesday, we got AMD, Google, McDonald's, BP, Chipotle, Visa, Pfizer, Crocs, which is one that whew, I've had quite a history with, SoFi, PayPal. On Wednesday, we got Eli Lilly, Microsoft, Caterpillar, Meta, Humana, Coinbase, Etsy, ADP, and Starbucks. And on Thursday, we got another big one with the names of Amazon, Apple, Intel, Merck, whew, Altria, MasterCard. And on Friday, we got the oil companies like Chevron and ExxonMobil. Now, taking a look at the heat map on the one week, we can see that there's a whole lot of red here. I mean, we just saw it losing around 1%. But honestly, there was only a couple greens here and there, and there really is only one massively deep green one in this whole entire thing, which we're gonna cover in just one second. But taking a look at now, guys, the technology sector, we can see here that the worst performer seems to be none other than the company, TE are losing 11.34% and the best performer is actually really easy to find and it seems to be none other than the company LAM Research Corp gaining 6.64%. But aside from that, everything here did uh, pretty bad. Looking now into the communications sector, you guys can see that this isn't that good either. The worst performer was the company, I thought it was going to be Verizon, no, it was the company IPG losing 7% and the best performer, it is none other than, it seems to be the company taking to interactive gaining 4.2 percent haha funny and now taking a look at the next sector we got the consumer cyclicals worst performer here it is none other than the company mohawk industries losing 18.73 percent and the best performer in this whole entire sector it is of course tesla <laughs> breaking records especially after elon musk came out talking about the future and uh you guys are saying right there 21.97 percent 22 percent basically on the seven day which is absolutely insane so yeah that one definitely brought up the sector a whole lot but the overall sector lost a whole lot as well looking down to the, to the consumer defensives the worst performer here it is the company kimberly clark losing 6.8 percent and the best performer it is philip morris as you guys can see right down there pm we got the company gaining 8.03 percent looking now into the financials a lot of red here a lot of red here we can see that the worst performer seems to be the company hig losing 7.98 percent but you also got companies for example like this one over here erie losing 7.82 percent but the best performer in the whole entire sector was none other than the company aon aon i don't really know how to say it gaining 4.89% into now the healthcare sector. A whole lot of red here. Wow, this is the reddest I've seen this sector in a long time. Okay, worst performer here. Wow, oh man, this is gonna be uh, troublesome to find. And it is none other than the company Walgreens losing 14.18%. But aside from that, guys, I mean, you got the company HCA Healthcare losing 12.5%. You got TMO Thermal Fisher losing 7.87. Guys, there's, there's a lot of losing companies here in the healthcare sector. Maybe an opportunity to buy some of these, honestly. So take a look at those. Now, the best performer, it is none other than... Uh, it seems to be the company Molina Healthcare gaining 12.36%. Absolutely crazy. Looking now into the industrial sector, another sector that lost a lot. I was not aware that so many companies lost this much this week. This is, you know, with just Tesla there, it honestly kind of hid all of this garbage. So we can see that the worst performer is none other than the company seems to be that it is this one guys or actually no it is not seems to be the company car carrier global corp losing 9.6 percent and the best performer is only like a few of them that gained but nonetheless though the best performer it is the company lhx gaining 1.62 percent into now the real estate sector a whole other red here all except for what like a handful once again we got the worst performer being the company are losing 7.2 percent and the best performer is the company tlr wow this thing's at 181 dollars guys this company was sub 100 dollars just like last year so hopefully y'all took advantage of this when this occurred but this is absolutely crazy 181 dollars wow i'm gonna have to check after this recording what in the world my overall capital gains is when it comes to this company. That's absolutely crazy. And of course, looking at realty income, fell at around five and a quarter percent. 
but still above $60 at $61.31. Looking at the utilities, another red sector, the worst performer here is a company GE Vernova gaining 7.63%. And to now the energy sector, worst performer here, it is the company, actually MPC, Marathon Petroleum, losing three and three quarters of a percent and the best performer was none other than the company Baker Hughes gaining 3.08%. And lastly, on the basic materials, wow, okay, this is insane. All of these companies are essentially in the red except for two, which, okay, we got the worst performer being the company Newmont Corp losing 16% on the week. And the only two companies that gain were, yeah, it was the company Corteva, gaining 1.58%, and the best performer was Mosaic Company, gaining 2.59%. So all in all, as you guys can see, it's been insane. Now, this upcoming week, again, as you guys saw, we do have a lot of a lot of earnings. And the following week after that, it is the election. And not only that, this upcoming week as well, not only do we have massive earnings, we also got PCE, and we got job numbers as well. And then the following, it is the election. This is going to be absolutely chaos. Guys, I'm going to try my best to stream pretty much every single day. Even if I do it by myself, I will do my best to stream every single day this week. And then next week on Tuesday, it is going to be the, the funnest day of the year. So with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching. And this does it for my part. Take it away, Mike. So we start off another week with the fear and greed still staying in greedy territory, but we actually ticked away from extreme greed, which we were previously at. Where do you think we're going to land this week with, with especially with a slew of earnings on deck? So let's 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 keep it a thousand here. We're going to start quite possibly the most volatile two weeks of the decade. No, no I wouldn't say the, the decade, say the but maybe century. just the, the, the argue, year. I would argue the century because no. Well, you don't know century. what might happen, right? Especially with big tech on deck. You got Powell the following week, the election. I'm like, you you pretty much slapped full that that agenda of uh, 20, 200 basis point moves in one direction. Yeah, it's very jam-packed. I mean, this whole entire week is when we have Apple, Microsoft, McDonald's, AMD. Uh, you know, then we have job earnings. And then after that, and we also have PCE. And then after that, we have the election. It's just yeah. going to be crazy. And by the way, even the week of the election, it's still a whole lot of earnings to be to be done, right? It's not yeah. just, you know, we're, you not, just, we're not done here. Yeah, you just have the big hitters this week, right? Like your AMDs, Correct. your Googs, Meta, Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, or Crapple, as we Visa, like to call Chipotle, it. Crocs, which, uh, you know, Caterpillar. Was, uh, speaking about Chipotle, isn't there like a restaurant chain that like could be the next Chipotle that's like kind of doing like a reverse split or something? Oh, S-Bucks. I was, we were talking about uh, Starbucks possibly being the next Chipotle, especially because the CEO that was former formerly of Chipotle is now their new CEO. So. Interesting. Yeah. So interesting. the question is, Starbucks is it, Starbucks it, is an interesting one. Yeah, and their earnings are Wednesday, so maybe we check that one out on Wednesday just to see how that plays out. Right? May even play it as an earnings play or a long term buy because it's going to be a little bit interesting with that one, especially you know the history of Chipotle from like being a fa failing company to like crazy evaluation now, right? So then right. they're split. So again, that's the right. one that like a lot of people are on our Discord talk about as well. So we may want to cover that one on Wednesday, but let's dive into the earnings for this week, kind of going through the expectations of the big hitters. Like, you know, you're starting with AMD on a Tuesday. Uh, we got 27 to 26 expectation for earnings, right? So expecting not the best earnings from AMD. Do you agree, disagree? No. Okay, so, okay, let me just preface something. This is not expectation, right? This is just the revisions. There has been 26 revisions to the downside, Yeah. right? So basically they're expecting less than, um, than they were. So it's not, that, it's not that the company will, it's that they're expecting less. Yeah. So just preface, let me just preface that right off the bat. Yeah, but it usually gives you a temperature of what's going on in the markets. Right, right. It gives you a temperature as to what people believe uh, yeah. will essentially occur. The only issue that I see with this 26 and 7 is that, well, with the 26 to the downside, it may actually, if they come in at like a dollar for yeah. EPS and like revenue of like 7 billion, then things are going to go up. Yeah, right? the classical, it'll, it'll like more. everyone's betting so bad, they get the good news. Or even let's say you get like you meet, let's say you meet. And then revenue slightly higher, it can it could be one of those like 
everyone like Wells Fargo, right? Everyone was expecting horrible earnings, and then they had a blowout earnings like JP Morgan. Mm -hmm. So could be one of and those. Then, and then City City actually did the, the the complete opposite when they had earnings. Yeah, yeah, you gotta love them. But um, Alphabet up next with nine to three. They um they actually don't have a lot of expectations, like considering like what we'll see in a bunch of these companies. But expected bullish for Goog, right? Uh, for Alphabet out there. So again, mm -hmm. Goog kind of was in an uptrend recently. I kind of did a video a couple weeks back about it and how I was thinking bullish for it. So it's going to be very, very interesting with it. What's the uh, current share price? Uh, for Goog? Yeah. Goog's current share price You could just is... scroll up. You could just you could have just scrolled up. Oh yeah, $166. $166, okay. 167 post market. Okay, all right, cool. Yep. Uh, so we got Microsoft, your favorite, um, up my, next. My boy. Uh, not looking Ooh. too shabby, but not looking too good either. I mean, I mean that to me. I mean, dude, if Microsoft buy were to <laughs> buy more, I yeah. I, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I'm not too bullish on Microsoft, just especially because of the price action it's recently had. Mm -hmm. Earnings could be the break everyone's toys scenario, where all the bulls or all the bears get broken. So again, grain of salt with that one of what could be the expectations. And uh, the one that I will be betting bullish, and I'll make sure I do a video for for you guys about it, is Meta. Because I don't know why anyone would bet bearish against this because this thing has blown out earnings more times than I can count and made a huge profit every time we play it. Dude, dude, you want to know something? What? This is a company that I think it was like, what, three years ago or yeah, something like that? Yeah, it was like $100 and everyone was discounting it. And now it's freaking $573. Like uh -huh. it's the comeback king. Literally and, the comeback course. And guess what I was saying? Guess what I was saying when they fell sub a hundred dollars? I think it was like three Buy. years ago, in like twenty twenty two, twenty twenty one. It's undervalued. I and was I was doing that. I did that this kind of free cash flow, and you guys could go back if you just put uh, META or I think back then it was FB still. I'll link. Um, I, I forget I'll find when the video. They, I'm gonna link in the description below for you guys. Just to... yeah. Um, but basically, I was saying, guys, this company should be worth around four hundred to six hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's that. Case That's and that. point. <laughs> but, Period. End yeah. of story. Now, uh, the more stinky version, as I call right, it. Wait, 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 wait. And, and, go to the dividends tab on that. Back then, they weren't paying a dividend. Now they are. Okay. So. Yeah, but yeah. it's a pity dividend. It's not even like a good. Matter, could you imagine buying, could you imagine buying Meta at like 95 bucks? Do like 100 shares, so 9,500 bucks. Back when it didn't have a dividend, now it's worth that much. I mean, if you, if you do that okay. math, that's I, I give you the, that's I give a you lot. That. Yeah, I give you that. So you got the plus that dividend on top of that. That's crazy, dude. Yeah, and then um, you got companies like Amazon. This one's an interesting one. Uh, twelve to twenty-one. So it's they, a little. They just it. It, yeah, it's like it's a little. Um, no one really knows, right? It's it's going to be an interesting one for Amazon, especially with. Uh, AWS, uh, Black Friday coming up, right? What their expectations for it are. True. And Cyber and, Monday. Yeah. And then you have the historical crash. And, one. and, and didn't we have, wait a minute, didn't we also have, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't we also have Prime Day last quarter? Yes. So this will be the, um, Prime Day would be the one because it happens in July. Uh, it would be this earnings would incorporate that. So you'll see the Prime Day results. So that's what there everyone's go. gonna be really looking at to see what Prime Day was. It's gonna be their big like, hey, big, you know, because Prime Day really is the catalyst for uh, Black Friday, right? Usually mm -hmm. kind of indicating that. Apple expected 18 to nine. I don't agree with this for one reason. There's been a lot of talk about how Apple forecasting sales is gonna come under expectations, how there's been recent articles about how the demand is not what Apple is saying, that all these bad things about Apple are going on and they're still expecting 18 to nine. I expect this to shift going into Thursday for Apple earnings just because it's it's too rosy of a picture for all the bad news that's been surrounding Apple. Hmm. Now, uh, getting into the less, let's say, meme-wordy Magnificent 7 stocks, you got uh, Intel, which I know some of us love. Can but you scroll I'm... up just so that way people see that it is Intel? Yeah. There we go. I Intel, okay. and then basically 0 to 3. No one expects this thing to be anywhere bullish whatsoever. <laughs> which... The question comes, do you throw, do you counterplay it? Do you counterplay yeah. it just because it's like, if you can find a cheap, and I'll look into options chains for it, definitely. 
can you find a cheap option to the upside that pays hugely if you're right, right? Because if Intel has blowout because they did something good, does it basically set you up for success going to that upside? And then do you look at downside potential? Because it's just so, ugh, it's so priced yeah. in. Yeah. S same I mean, way like these next two, right? Exxon Mobile with their, um, they're expecting actually very bad earnings, zero to 15. What about, what about my, my boy Chevron? You better have Chevron after that. Yeah, I do have Chevron. Just for everyone, $150 share, zero to 16. So both of them expected to be bad earnings. But then again, I ask the question, if everyone's expecting one way and it breaks the mold, what happens? Well, let me tell you, no matter what happens when it comes to my baby boy Chevron, buy more. I win. <laughs> oh, yeah, because if it goes up, you sell your call and everything. And then well, I don't. So, so full disclosure, I haven't sold calls on Chevron now for this whole entire year. This should be your ABGO because, play. Right, exactly. Mainly because I don't, yo, I make 200 bucks on Chevron every single quarter. I don't want to risk it. Oh, yeah. Um, but if Chevron were to go up, dude, <laughs> Chevron will become, you know, it's technically my third biggest stock by capital gains. Um, ironically. But if it were to go down, if, if, my, if it goes down to like close to my average share price of $101, guess what I'm doing? Buying more. Buy more. Yep. But even buying my, my son some, some Chevron as well. Okay. And then, uh, you know how everyone's like talks about oil, right? Like the, the, this next analogy is a perfect analogy for what everyone, like the whole economy is like, oil's fine, everything's fine. And then uh, it, got, it got to love the... Uh, the, the meme wordiness of QE infinity, the economy and the media is showing. So it's like, is is everything fine, right? Everything's fine. As we said in the beginning of the, the video, everything is fine. Go back to sleep, rosy picture. You only got 7% mortgage rates as the Fed cut 50 basis points. Uh, who told you that was gonna happen? Oh yeah, you, us. I literally yeah. said the bond market is gonna look at you and say, you have lost your damn mind. I want more money because we're all greedy, you know what? Yeah. And yeah. I mean, you even said it better. I mean, cause, cause I was the skeptical one when, when it came to this, I thought that things were just going to, you know, rates were going to fall. People were going to start jumping into bonds, but then you said, nah, we got used to that 4%, you know, three month. Yeah, we're going back or like 5% three it. a month. Yeah. We're going, we're, we are not leaving that. I love, we are I love not the title. That. I love the title. Uh, jumps back over 7% as strong economical data rolls in. So it's like, Soft landing, not soft landing. Cheap rates, not cheap rates. Cheap mortgage, not cheap mortgage. I'm like, and we started seeing early war indications of this. I remember posting about two months ago about how the Fed's expectation, right, of cutting rates. And everyone's like, you would expect all these mortgage applications to come out of the woodwork because you would have early refinancing. And none of it happened. Then the Fed cuts rates and it's like, oh, mortgage rates back down to 6.5, 6%. Now, a lot of people scoop that up, right? Because they were paying seven and a half, eight at some point, some ridiculous rates. But it, it just, it was a short lived moment because as we've said, they've given up the fight on inflation. And also we're gonna get more inflation data this, we're actually gonna get a crud ton of data this week. And we don't have all the expectations. However, I the expectations we have, I mean, it's just, it's horrible. Like plain and simple. I don't know if you've seen you the expectations. In. I don't know if you've seen the expectations for this, but I have not. it's it. I mean, they're horrible. I mean, like horrible, horrible, horrible. So, so let's, PCE is what? Oh, so, no, okay, we yeah, don't so, even have PCE expectations. Sorry. I'm talking about job number expectations. I'm like, if this thing comes in line, it the mark is going to be like, huh? And then so Monday, you know, you got bill auctions, uh, five, three, two year, six month, right? So we're going to be interesting to see what the uh, spreads on those are, but it's not going to be a big mm -hmm. catalyst event. Uh, no. We got some home data coming out on Tuesday with home prices. Home so this price is going to be the one yeah. to see if seasonality continues. Does it follow the trend or do we see further degradation? They're expecting month over run 0.2. So not really going to expect the year over year number to come in super, super bad. And then we start off with consumer confidence uh, expected to still stay high. I don't know what consumers you're polling. I guess the ones that have money, but uh, uh, that pool is like this big. But here's the where ones the that narrative. No, 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 the ones that aren't in 1.14 trillion dollars in credit card debt. Yeah, that 
I remember that hit a trillion and it's just like exponential. Like the US debt, we're about to hit 36 yeah. trillion. So, you know, we yeah. just we just hit 35 two months ago. It's like, ah, I'm tacking on a trillion. And then uh, Jamie Demon saying basically this is that you guys are all crazy. Uh, Did you just say Jamie Demon? Yes, that's the nickname people okay. give him. <laughs> okay. Jay Bravo and all of them give him that nickname. But this is where the narrative starts turning horrible. Oops. Jolt job openings. Previously, you know, they were expecting blowout job openings, right? And they came out at 8 million. They were expecting like 8.2. Like it was just a horrible expectation. And then we got 7.9 expected. So it's like, okay, you're you're cutting 100,000 job openings now. And this is just like, usually you guys overestimate this thing. So what happens when you try to like, okay, we were wrong so many times. And the number still comes in below expectations. Like, let's say this comes in at seven. How... What would the market's reaction be? To me, it's they would basically be like, "What on earth's happening?" Now, let's It'll, say, like, yeah, yeah they say it's one data point, right? One data point. Well, let, let's take a look at, uh, you know, standard. They're going to keep lying to you about GDP, but let's look at ADP non-farm payrolls, hundred K. I remember me and you having a conversation about this six, seven months ago that we wouldn't see carnage in the economy until we started seeing 100 to sub 100K job numbers. Double digit, yep. Yeah, and we basically said, once you start getting to 150s, 120s, it's when the alarm bells should start going off because the hundreds and the sub hundreds come rather quickly afterwards. As we've seen in the last two job reports, we started getting those numbers. Now they're expecting 101 versus 143. Remember, they got slaughtered last time they, they made this expectation. And if this comes in or comes in a two digit number, does it start painting an interesting narrative? Then on top of it, we're gonna get Thursday uh, challenger job cuts along with PCE prices. We don't have the expectations for it. However, if we just look at the month over month for core, that is not looking like a rosy picture. 0.3 versus 0.1 previously doesn't necessarily paint a good picture for that 2.7 on the year over year previously for core, right? Stable, flat, not really going down. That's not the numbers you would paint for downwards inflation. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I didn't normal CCPI go up? Uh, yes, it ticked up. Yes, it where, did. Well, sorry, it did core ticked up one, one of them ticked up, one of them ticked down to basically equalize with one another. But I think core ticked down, regular CPI ticked up. I would have to go back mm -hmm. and check. But anyway, it, it's yeah. you're not playing the good inflation narrative, right? The Fed has given up on inflation and also shelter hasn't moved an inch. And it's still not moving an inch. But that's not even the worst part, right? Then we go into personal spending. It's expected to tick up again. Inflationary pressures. Now we get into the horrible news. So if we look at at non-farm payrolls expectations, 101,000. That's pretty much in line with ADP. Which is rare number one, and problem number right. two, it's only 11,000 above 100. You don't have a lot of margin for its two digit coming to you soon. Now the question is, are they ex putting this so that they expect it to come in and blow it out so everything's hunky-dory before the election? Because again, this data is coming out before the election. Or is this basically damage control that we're already losing jobs, we're already in the negatives, and they're fluffing the number to 100? Which, which of the two scenarios do you think it is? Actually, you're forgetting one other scenario. <laughs> what? That 254 may get revised down. I quit. <laughs> You forgot I, about that one, didn't you? Yep, yep. Yeah. I forgot. I forgot about the. You forgot about the revisions. Oh yep. lord. Yep. No, no, no. They won't revise it. I'm like, no, no. Because I remember, I remember when that 254 came out last month. I was just like, that's gonna get revised down. There's no way to stay in there. And now I'm looking at it again. I'm like, oh, that's right. I forgot. This was supposed. I, that I think that would this be Armageddon. I mean, that uh -huh. would be. We'll know the foreshock if ADP comes in. Let's say, remember, if ADP comes in. At, near that if it comes in two digits just just forget about friday right like it's just going to be the tale of the economy is going to hell in a handbasket but if these numbers oh. right let, let's not even like they're expecting unemployment 4.1 which i still don't understand how they come up with that number as less jobs more i'm like uh you people have lost your damn how lives. do you have 254,000 allegedly 254,000 jobs yet unemployment is 4.1 percent doesn't make any sense math government math 
<laughs> exactly. Government math. <laughs> that, that, that's the thing. So it's like, with all that, it's like, okay, th this is just setting up to be horrible. Like these, like projecting these numbers, you oh, they always give you the good side. They don't necessarily like anchor it super, super low in order to then beat, right? Because it's not been their strategy. They're not that smart. No, they're not. But let's actually connect this as to why they may this may actually be really bad. And again, guys, a lot could change. Right? These, these are just projections that, that we're seeing here. But let's uh, let's let's tie everything together in a nice little gift. Since it is the end of the year, let's tie everything together in a nice little gift to to uh, see why this may actually be coming out this bad. Who is winning right now when it comes to the election, based off of real clear politics? Who is winning? Who's in the lead? Orange man. Therefore, what have we been saying? Barry, they're gonna start. We already started seeing it. They're gonna they're gonna start polluting the numbers, poisoning. No, not polluting, not polluting. They're gonna start giving the real numbers. Yeah. To prove to show that it's actually his fault. Yeah, because they've, does, they've given up. They've given up on the national election. Now they're just trying to save down ballot because. If you hand this man basically well, house, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go that far. I'm gonna stop you. Sorry, but I'm gonna stop you. No, guys, if you're watching this and you haven't done early voting yet, okay, fine. I haven't done early voting either. You have to go and vote on the fifth, yeah. November fifth. Yeah. Doesn't matter if you're in New York. Doesn't matter if you're in California. Go and vote. If, if go and vote. Yeah. The uh, national average, right, is basically. Um, it's a, it's like point a one, sorry, not point national. Early up. voting. Early voting. If you okay. started seeing, have you seen any of these numbers coming out of early voting? Yes, yes, I have. When you it's have insane. Republicans leading in early voting, I'm just like, I don't want to even think about voter turnout, right? Like, it's if you if you follow historical context, right? Go out and vote November fifth. People don't historically change their behaviors, right? So let's say these all you make an assumption that all this early voting is voters that haven't voted before. And then you still expect to have the standard turnout on election day. It puts a very interesting predicament in play because you have a chance to win the electoral college and the um, popular, popular vote. vote by not a small margin, by a huge, 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 huge yeah. margin. <laughs> yes. You bigly. But do not get complacent. I'm serious. What? Do not get complacent. If you think that you're winning, you lose. No, here's a period perfect, in the story. Here's a perfect incentive. Do you like paying unrealized capital gains tax? If you do, please stay home. If you don't, go to the polls. It is that simple. There's your motivation. Do you want to have 50% of your paycheck go poof? Not even paycheck. It's money that you don't even have. Yeah. They'll, it's they'll, find a way, that. they'll find a way to raise your taxes to fifty percent because you're gonna be a, you're gonna be the rich. Uh, remember how the income tax was only one percent on the highest income earners, while the other guy wants to get rid of the income tax. But 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 but, but apparently some people are like, oh my stars and goddards, but how will we pay for everything? It's just like tear the hell out of what everything. A, what a way to justify theft. What a way to justify theft. I never like, thought it's like the mafia. <laughs> It's like the mafia. Yeah. It, it'd be a shame if your uh, restaurant burnt down. Uh, you know, there, there's there been a lot of uh, arsonists in the area. It's like... It, it just, it amazes me. My father ha ha has always said this. Uh, slavery only existed because people wanted to be slaves. Yeah, I could, I could see that. Because if not, people would fight and, and say no and say no to things. The, the fact that there are literally some people, and some people, even in the comments section, saying that, no, we need to have an income tax. And it's like, what is wrong with you? Why? What is wrong with you? Yeah, but that's neither here nor, nor there, guys. I personally think that the reason why, uh, and again, things could change, but the reason why these numbers may be looking this way could be because of the fact that uh, he's in the lead and they don't like that. Yep. And to sum it all up again this week, um, I'm going to have the Joe Rogan video actually linked in the end of this video in the card so you guys can go see the Donald Trump three hour discussion with Joe Rogan. Uh, I saw it, it doesn't feel like three hours. It feels like a five minute conversation, but then you're sitting there being like, that was three hours. It was a fantastic like, conversation. And I hope I, I saw the whole three hours. And I'm just like, why stop it here? Let's go on to three because he had a speech. <laughs> he literally yeah. would have kept going. He had to go do a speech.
he was like, it's like his staff was like, hey, we gotta go do this speech. <laughs> so I'm sure great. they're gonna do it again, right? He, at the end, they say um, that he wants to do it again, that he definitely wants to be back. But again, net speculative positions this week, 23,000. That means there's only one team to steal money from this week. So make sure you guys pay attention to the levels. Make sure you hit the like button on the way out. Hit the subscribe button and have bell notifications on. Make sure you guys hit that. The Joe Rogan videos over here. Make sure you guys check it out. Even if you don't like politics, it's a fantastic three-hour video to basically see two people just hammer out different topics. It's really, really, really fun. Make sure you do it while doing something around the house. You know, two birds, one stone. Thank you again so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next one.